Dear viewers, welcome back to our channel. Is this real? According to the report from the American Power website on August 31st, the Japanese Ministry of Defense recently disclosed more details about the new generation Aegis-equipped vessel, ASEV, in its defense budget proposal. This is seen by the outside world as a step forward in Japan's military development. In response, American media reported and compared this Japanese warship with China's Type 055 destroyer. This undoubtedly highlights the competitive situation and development trends of various countries in the military technology field in the Asia-Pacific region. With Japan's military development, we see a synchronous progress in military capabilities between our country and Japan. This competition and development in technology and armaments have raised questions about whether we can ensure regional peace and stability. Faced with the current complex geopolitical environment, how should we balance the needs of national security and regional stability is a question worth pondering. Ultimately, whether this military competition will lead to further escalation of tensions or promote closer cooperation and dialogue among countries is a matter of concern for everyone who cares about regional peace and stability. Specifically, three questions deserve readers' attention. 1. Under the background of Japan disclosing the latest details of its ships, does the arms race among regional countries contribute to regional security and stability? 2. How can regional countries ensure national security while avoiding further escalation of tensions due to military competition with neighboring countries? 3. In the increasingly complex geopolitical situation in the Asia-Pacific region, how can the international community alleviate regional tensions through diplomacy and dialogue and promote peace and cooperation? The report states that this new type of vessel will become the largest surface combat vessel in Japan after World War II, with a design inspired by the multi-purpose missile cruiser, comparable in size to the Chinese Navy's Type 055 Super Destroyer. It is reported that Japan's defense budget for fiscal year 2024 is approximately $52.6 billion, indicating Japan's attempt to keep pace with China in terms of military strength. According to detailed information in Japan's fiscal year 2024 defense budget, the overall design of the new Aegis-equipped vessel is similar to that of the Maritime Self-Defense Force's current Maya-class destroyer. The vessel will be equipped with the American-made and slash spy 7 radar, installed on a tower-like structure on the top of the bridge to increase detection range. It is reported that the length of the new Aegis-equipped vessel is 190 meters, the width is 25 meters, and the standard displacement is 12,000 tons. In comparison, the standard displacement of Japan's current Maya-class destroyer is 8,200 tons, and the standard displacement of the U.S. Navy's Ticonderoga-class cruiser is 9,600 tons. In addition, according to the Japanese Ministry of Defense, the tonnage of the new Aegis-equipped vessel will be According to reports, Japan has made design adjustments to the vessels originally planned for ballistic missile defense, and the updated Aegis-equipped vessel has more uses. This new type of large surface vessel is equipped with 128 vertical launch units, compared to the previous Maya-class vessels which only had 96 launch units. The new vessels can launch standard 3-block IIA anti-missile interceptor missiles and standard 6-multi-purpose ship-to-air missiles with limited capability to counter hypersonic targets. In addition, the standard 6-a missile can also attack surface targets. The Japanese Ministry of Defense announced that these new vessels will also be equipped with an improved version of the Type 12 anti-ship missile under development, which has stealth characteristics and a range of over 1,000 kilometers. With Japan's procurement of American Tomahawk cruise missiles, it is expected that these vessels will also be equipped with such missiles, thus possessing long-range strike capabilities against both land and sea targets. In addition to various missiles, the new Aegis-equipped vessels will also be equipped with an MK-45 127mm naval gun. By 2032, they also plan to be equipped with high-energy laser weapons for anti-drone purposes. In terms of operation, the new type of vessel requires only about 240 crew members, which is lower than the 300 crew members required for the Maya-class destroyer. Given the recruitment difficulties faced by the Japanese self-defense forces, it is particularly important to increase the level of automation of vessels to reduce personnel requirements. According to reports from the Power website, China is rapidly expanding its maritime capabilities and is gradually pulling ahead of Japan's maritime power. 
This development trend has caused serious concern for Japan's maritime self-defense force regarding the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy, and in response, Japan is working to build a new fleet based on multi-purpose surface vessels. When comparing the latest vessels of China and Japan, Japan's new generation Aegis-equipped vessel is similar in size to China's Type 055 destroyer, but their mission orientations are different. Although Japanese vessels emphasize anti-missile defense in design, Chinese-produced Type 055 destroyers highlight their versatility, providing escort for carrier strike groups and serving as the core force of the People's Liberation Army Navy Surface Combat Group. In addition, due to China's significant shipbuilding capabilities, it is expected that the number of Type 055 destroyers will increase significantly, further strengthening China's maritime military presence. Finally, I summarize today's video, hoping it brings you some inspiration and value. While analyzing this competition, we must recognize that technological development and the arms race often accompany uncertainty in regional security and stability. Although Japan is trying to keep pace with China, this process may exacerbate tensions in the region. For example, Japan has designed its new type of vessel as a more versatile Aegis-equipped vessel to counter various threats, while China's Type 055 destroyer demonstrates stronger multi-purpose capabilities. This competition in technology and strategy may trigger more arms races rather than cooperation and reconciliation. Moreover, the military competition among regional countries has also attracted attention from the international community. Especially in sensitive areas such as the Taiwan issue, the tense relationship between Japan and China may have a significant impact on regional stability. Therefore, we need to carefully consider how to resolve tensions through diplomacy and dialogue, and avoid strategic misjudgments and military conflicts. Does technological progress and arms race really contribute to regional peace and stability? Faced with the complex geopolitical situation, how can we find a balance between national security and regional stability, avoid further escalation of tensions, and promote cooperation and dialogue? These are questions that require careful consideration. Whether it's our Type 055 destroyer or Japan's latest destroyer, they are important manifestations of our respective naval forces. However, the strength of military power does not necessarily bring about regional peace and stability. True peace and stability require the joint efforts and dialogue of all countries. I hope that in the future, the Asia-Pacific region can achieve true peace and stability, and countries can maintain regional peace and stability through dialogue and cooperation based on mutual respect. Feel free to share in the comments section. That's all for today's video, see you next time for more exciting content. Bye-bye.